Uh, Manchester United won. Fulham nil. the final score. Manchester United are top of the table uh, as we welcome in Stuart Robson, who's in Valencia ahead of the big uh, La Liga kickoff this weekend. We'll hear from Robbo in a moment, but Craig, let's start with you. Not particularly pretty from United, but a win, a good start to the season. Wins a win, the old cliche, a wins a win. Better than They did start with a win last year against Wolves. It was yes. controversial with the, the non-penalty call. Uh, this was better mm -hmm. uh, without being brilliant. Uh, but not really expecting it to be, to be honest with you. And, and look, Leno had to make some saves. Uh, they had a little bit more domination than I've seen them before at home. Uh, but Fulham, Fulham have only got themselves to blame. They had two times in the second half, they had three on ones. Yes. I mean, the final ball must have been, Marco Silva must, be, must have been tearing his hair out. So they didn't take advantage of those lapses from United. Fulham didn't take advantage of that. They paid the ultimate price. And I think after the end of last season, about all the talk about uh, Ten Hag, then in the summer with the new signings, at home for your first game, it's not going to be brilliant, but it was a win. Yeah. And that, that's at least better. We saw Delic coming on to get some game time. We saw Xerxes, I mentioned him, the new signing. I didn't realise he was such a big lad. He looks a big, strong lad as well. And they obviously need somebody up there... Uh, to, to score goals. Rasmus Hoyland is injured again. Mason Mount, they were, he was switching between Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes, but all this sort of false nine, none of them at the end of the day are, are, are you know, out and out strikers. And at least Zerkze gave them something uh, a little bit extra when he come on. So you can't have any complaints. No, I suppose you can't, Robbo. If you're Manchester United, three points from the opening game, move on. Yeah, they did quite a lot of good things. Some of their one-touch football was good. We saw that pass that Casemiro played when Fernandez should have, as Craig said, lifted it over the goalkeeper. There was some good attacking play where they won the ball back in quite good positions. Uh, so there were certain aspects of the game that I thought looked good. And they tried to pass it forward more than I've seen them pass it forward in previous games. But there were still those problems where they were counter attack There was a couple of counter-attacks very early on in the game when uh, Traore had a, a couple of runs. Uh, and they didn't defend it very well. They were caught open in midfield. I thought Casemiro played well. But... Again, as Craig said, there was two opportunities that Fulham had to take the lead in the second half when they had a 2v1 and they hit, yeah. they hit uh, uh, Maguire with the ball on the first one and then they played a bad pass for the second one. So there were moments where I thought Manchester United could have been counter-attacked so easily. So there's things that we saw last year uh, still happen. There's no doubt about that. Some good football, maybe a bit more attack in play, but also they are vulnerable to the counter-attack. And they didn't look very comfortable, I wouldn't say, from set plays. Fulham looked a threat at set plays. I thought United actually gone back a, a week or so. I thought there was a lot of decent stuff from them in the Community Shield. Yep. Uh, you know, after an initial period where uh, there was a lot of domination from from City, some of their passage patterns of play, one touch movement, particularly the one early on where I think uh, Mason Mount almost get in from a from a you know. A, 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 a move that had like seven or eight passes. There was that quite a lot, the counter-attack. I thought there was enough last week to suggest that it's going to be better for them, which I think it will be. That being said, it was a low bar last year, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Very low bar. Yep. Apart from the Liverpool games in the City Cup final. It was down here. Just how good it's going to be. And Rasmus Hoyland last year up front, it's hard to criticise him because he's a young man, but he's very raw. He's very... I mean, he'll work his socks off. He'll run around, he'll fight and he'll scrap and he'll give you 90 minutes plus injury time every week. But he's raw and he's picked up quite a few injuries. So they need somebody in that position going forward that's going to get them a quarter of goals. Now, whether that is Joshua Zitze going for, going for the rest of the season, that remains to be seen. But all I know is when you go into a new club as a player and it's your first game and it's at home, you'd, you'd want to start, but he comes off the bench, he gets the winning goal, it's perfect for him. Yeah, it's a dream scenario, isn't it, Robbo? Absolutely. You know, the crowd would go home disappointed if it's nil-nil. You know, the, uh, uh, Manchester United have made several chances. Fulham have made several chances as well. It's an even game. Uh, maybe Manchester United just pipped it in terms of possession. But the crowd go home disappointed if it's a nil-nil draw. Now they go away saying, well, we, this could be a good season. We've just got a centre-forward mm -hmm. who we've bought. He's come on, he's changed the game, he's scored a goal. It's great for him, it's great for the crowd. It's also great for the manager because there was question marks. Why are they going with Fernandez and Mason Mount in those sort of false nine positions? Why couldn't they start with Zerts? Maybe he's not fully fit. But... At the end, he'll say, I made the right substitution. I gave him 20 minutes at the end. He proved me right, and he scored the winning goal. And he's the player for the future. So it's a, it's a great night for him. It's a great night for Ten Hag, and it's a great night for the Manchester United supporters.
It most certainly is. He's welcome in uh, Julian Laurent. Jules, we discussed a lot, didn't we, in pre-season, where are the goals going to come from from Manchester United? Is Xerxes ready? Well, for 20 minutes, he certainly showed that he is. Yeah, it's a great finish. I mean, he puts his foot there, his left foot. I'm not sure how much he directs the ball. He, he wants to just make makes contact with the, uh, the Garnacho cross. But we've said it when he signed, he's not an in-and-out striker. He's not the same profile to Haaland or to Haaland. This is not what he does. And, and you see on the goal, because he drops quite deep to mm. get the ball from Bruno, to give the ball to Casemiro, then to Garnacho, and then he's back in the box. So he's not somebody who's going to stay in the box just to be there to finish the, the goal, a bit like what we see Haaland or we saw Haaland during last season. It's a different profile. So, And that's why he hasn't really been the most clinical in his career. I think last season with Bologna was his best and that was just 11 goals in the league, for example. So I don't think he's a 35 goal a season striker, but he will bring something different to, 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 to the game. And I think tonight that helped. There will be other games where maybe Holland will be better because of his profile. And there's certainly games where Zergzi will be very useful for this team. We expect Manchester United still to be active, don't we? in the transfer window before it closes at the end of the month, Jules. Uh, tell us more about the possibility of Ugarte making that move from PSG to United. Yeah, it's an interesting one, this one, because uh, United have had two offers rejected already, but they, they were quite a while ago. In the last three weeks, it's been a bit more quieter, maybe because if you look at the game tonight, it, we had a good Casemiro, much better than yeah. anything that we saw last season, for example. It's not the Casemiro that we saw at Real Madrid two, three years ago, but it's much better than what we saw. It was maybe United suddenly in possession, one of United's best players tonight. The ball for Bruno in the first half is an outstanding ball. He was very, very uh, active in the game and Kobe Maynou next to him. So would you go and spend 65 million or 60 million on Ugarte? when Casimiro is in this kind of form. I mean, you need more bodies, that's for sure, especially in that defensive infield role. But spend all that money for somebody who might not be a starter in your team, that's what I think, that's where the Ugarte to United um, possibility is right now. I think they are pondering it because if Menu and Casimiro can offer you a really good season, then the backup doesn't have to be worth 65 million. But that's a gamble, isn't it? Considering what we saw from Casimiro last season, Craig, because obviously he did well today, but can you really judge him on one game? No, because as the season rolls on and they play better teams and maybe they're getting a bit of a chasing in the middle of the park, which they did quite a lot last year, that's when he really struggled. And you can have a, a teenager in there all you want and Kobe Minor to run about after you, but the gaps that that will leave is just, is just too big to, mm. to defend. So I think there is still a, a huge question there, but that, that's a lot of money for a player who... You know, if you we're talking about replacing a guy who's been a legend in the game, but let's be honest about it, the legs have pretty much gone. Now, he might be doing a decent job. He did a decent job in the uh, Community Shield and another decent job tonight. As I say, he looks as if he's a little trimmer than last year. Maybe there's one last roll of the dice for him. I don't know. But to do it over a full season, I think, in England, with all the cup competitions that's going on, uh, I think that's a bit much. So... You know, they've already spent a lot of money on players that are not regulars or might not be regulars. There's 60 million plus, I think, on Mason Mount. OK, he had injuries, but he, but you can't say if when everybody's fit, Mason Mount's going to be a regular. Anthony was even more, not a regular. So they have these players that they've spent money on that, when fit, are not guaranteed to be in that first 11. I, I think they're at a stage now, if you're spending upwards of 50, 60 million... It has to be somebody that's going to come in and make a difference on a weekly basis. Because I think they've wasted enough money over the last few years. And that's one of the reasons maybe they're not able to go out and, and spend what they, what they want. So, no, great for Casemiro at the moment. It's been a good start, but I don't know if he can last the season playing like that. What do you think, Robbo? Uh, absolutely, they've got to get somebody else in. You know, Casemiro, I thought, was excellent last week. I thought he was outstanding in the second half in the Community Shield. thought he played well again tonight with his passing. He looked fitter, uh, as, as Craig said and, and, and Julian said. He looks much fitter, he looks sharper. But he's not going to be able to play the whole season. And I don't think Maynou was going to be able to play the whole season. So you need... One of them might get injured, one of them might uh, fall out of form. So you need good uh, cover. And that means another midfield player in because Mason Mount, I don't think, can come back and play in that position. I'm not sure Bruno Fernandes 
suits that position either. And uh, McTominay looks as though he's always, they're always trying to get rid of McTominay. So they've yeah. got to get somebody. And Ugarte might just be that player that uh, plays I don't know, 70% of the games and they have a little swap around every so often when the other players aren't fully fit. But they need another central midfield player, no doubt about that.